that uh, did this for extra money. I know there was a too loose no neck in the eighties in Milwaukee, and his name was Rick Felsky, and he just walked in, and was walking around the studio, and walked in and saw this, you know, he saw this uh, set going up for a horror host show, and he goes, "Well, this is cool. What's this all about?" They go, "Well, don't you know this is for a horror host show, and you're the host." He didn't even know. They already had chosen that he was going to have to do that goofy gig. So, oh, you know, then in the last minute, he didn't even, he told me, I got, there's an interview on YouTube uh, uh, with me interviewing him, but he wasn't in makeup, but he was talking about the old days. And he said he literally, you know, did his, he had his makeup he'd come up with. It was minutes before he was supposed to go out and do the show, not surprising. And he didn't have a name for his character yet. So he just happened to look at a calendar and it was too loose Lautrec. So that's when he came up with too loose, no neck. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, the market quality, isn't it? But so yeah, this is just uh, it's just been a really cool history, and it's 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 managed to you know people are still doing it, and it's alive. And uh, I've been you know I'm doing 16 years, new show every week, and it was something I started out. It was just kind of you know I went in there, I didn't really, you know, I guess I didn't take it all that seriously. I mean, I built the nice set and everything right away, but. You know, it just kind of was irresponsible a little bit in the beginning. And then I noticed, I started hearing feedback that, like, grandparents were watching it on Saturday night with the grandkids. Like, this was something that they wanted to experience with their grandkids because they had grown up with a host. And I started hearing that, and I kind of I was like, okay, I got to pull it back a little bit now and be a little more responsible and put more <laughs> energy to it. And then it just it started growing because at that time, you, there was the only thing they, you had for really a platform was cable. In, Ken- in Kenosha yep. and in Milwaukee was the same thing. There wasn't all these and, different options, you know? And sometimes no remote control. You had to actually get up and change the channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, that now that's back in my past. But um, <laughs> so, you know, so the, and in any case, though, then it just, uh, you know, then it, it just it just grew, kept growing and growing. And it was really it's not the same now because there are all those different platforms. And now Matt and Milwaukee closed. So the, after six, 15 and a half years in Milwaukee, that's not on currently right now. So we're going to figure out what we're going to do as far as getting that on roll call or getting our own, you know, uh, web channel going to do to continue. But then again, there's the radio show. So the radio show, this radio show is kind of, it's kind of taking the lead over everything in a way because <laughs> you're on every night doing something. But, oh, yeah, and it's easy to listen to, you know, just go to the yeah. WLIP.com. Right. Play and there you go. Yeah. So we're all set up here, you know, and, and so you know, it's a broadcast radio here in Kenosha. So it's <laughs> the real. I deal. got a question. I got a question for you, good sir. Okay. And if you have to say five, I understand because it's a hard question. Who's your favorite, either actress or actor, in horror? Oh well, it obviously would be Bella Lugosi. Okay. Well, certainly Bella Lugosi, Lon Chaney coming in at second, and then you know, but uh, yeah, that's a for for uh, you know for a male actor for a female. Hmm, I have to give that some thought. Yeah, you know they haven't. There hasn't been really one that's been consistent all those years. I say maybe Karen Black. Karen Black, Ooh, you know, Karen one. Black's a cool one. Um, a well, wide. You know, when Car- she gets chased by the Zuni warrior. Yeah, that was. <laughs> Best. Now that you know, you talk about that particular time in in horror movies. We're talking like the the early seventies, maybe mid seventies, when I believe it was ABC that was producing. Uh, they were producing TV movies that were be- predates viral as far as reaction from the public. Those movies were getting big reactions. Everybody was talking about uh, what was that trilogy of terror with Karen Black. Every, yep. Everybody talked about the original Night Stalker when it was a movie, the first one. That was, uh, you blew up. Gargoyles uh, was, was another one. Uh, that or no? Yeah, Kolchak. Okay. And then Gargoyles was another one that was really everybody talking Oh, man, talked, that one was crazy. Yeah. They're, they're in the desert, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. that was... And then uh, another big one, really not not your typical kind of horror movie, but it was a, uh, it was a thriller called Duel about a guy being chased through the desert by a, a crazy... Yeah, that was uh, Spielberg. Um, Spielberg's first film. Yep. Yep. I, I own that on VHS and and Blu-ray. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, there you go. I you, love it. You got good taste, but those those were just all those were just you were you were gripped to the chair. Those were really yeah. uh, 
that was an exciting time for television, you know. And they left a lot to the imagination too. They oh didn't well, just, yeah. You know. oh. But um, as far as my favorite actor, I actually had a T-shirt of him underneath my outfit at the at the show. But uh, Vincent Price. Oh well, oh, yeah. you know, I I didn't even I should have I should have said Vincent Price too in there. It's hard to compare those though, but they all are are extremely uh, fantastic, great, and talented. Mm-hmm. So. And then Angus Grimm too. Uh, uh, rest oh, in peace. Yeah. Well, there's there's been a lot of them, and a lot of them guys didn't start out, you know, thinking they were going to be the cookie cutter horror lead actor guy. They just kind of, you know, fell into it. And, and mm-hmm. uh, but but it's interesting. It's been quite a legacy in horror. All right, Oliver, the caretaker Collins. Uh, we have to take a commercial break for about four minutes. You going to stick with us? I hope. Oh yeah. Okay. I will be here. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you. All right. We'll be back with more after these messages. 1050 WLIP. Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast. After midnight. WLIP. We are back on Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast, coming to you live on this Thursday morning. And on the line, we have from the Fiendish Phantoms, which will be appearing Saturday the 9th at the port of Kenosha Beverage House, 7014 50th Street, for the Crimson Theater 16-year anniversary party. And we have Oliver the Caretaker Collins with us. Uh, So glad you could join us tonight. Yes, thank you. No, no problem, no problem. The... The ground is starting to freeze anyway, so I can't really dig too much in the graveyard. So uh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah, I you know I always wanted to work in a graveyard. Uh, it's all right. It's if you like quiet, it's good. Oh, that sounds perfect for me. Well, I always found it to be very a very peaceful place. Now, what do you think it is about? Uh, there is something comforting about the horror genre. And the, the 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 love of the horror movies, and now you know, well, you know, Halloween is probably more popular than it ever has been. Horror conventions are on the rise everywhere. Uh, Days of the Dead, for instance, you know, just delivering fantastic shows for the fans. And uh, well, you know, what, what do you what is it about horror movies in the genre that attracts you? Uh, just um, being scared. <laughs> uh, that feel of fear, you know, it's uh, uncontrollable. You know, a lot of people don't like it. A lot of people are like, "Oh, I don't like spooky movies," but it's the fear and the unknown. You know, I mean, you like to watch a movie make you think. A lot of those horror films were of the supernatural and stuff that, you know, who knows if it's real or not. You know, it's- I got you. It depends on what scares you. You know, what scares me is the emergency alert system. The emergency alert system, you know, the one we've all grown up with. For some reason, it seems like it's taking a more, what they, they even um, had it uh, mentioned on TV, just a, a more of a civil warning. Uh, it just seems like it's got more of a duck and cover kind of flavor to it nowadays with, uh, you know, being threatened by, uh, uh, well, North Korea threatening to nuke us and whatnot. But the reason I'm bringing this up is in uh, four minutes and 36 seconds, we're going to have an, a test of, like, the emergency broadcast system on this station. So if we're talking... going to be all right? Well, no, we're going to... It's just going to be a test. But what's going to happen for, on your end of it is you won't be able to hear us, okay? Okay. You won't hear the test either. It'll just be like a break of silence. So just stick with us through that. It shouldn't last too long. It usually doesn't. But, uh, you know, at least I have a warning here that I know it's coming up. Right. And it's a test. Okay. You know, if it, if, when it's a normal, like if it was a weather bulletin, then it would just be, oh, it's going to be coming through in a minute. But when it's a test, we get about an hour warning. So I just want to let you know. I, I It snuck up on me kind of quick. I knew it was coming, but I thought it was going to be a little later in the hour. So we're good for, for a little bit here. But anyway, yes, uh, the, a lot of... A lot of cool songs I see that the Fiendish uh, Phantoms have. We're just going through your catalog here, and i, I got to say I'm quite impressed. There's one that's really weird that I don't even think belongs on the album, but it, it was the first song we ever got any recognition from, so. and that's uh, Stand. Okay. Um, it doesn't. It's not very Fiendish. It's a good song, but it's not very Fiendish. It's, it's um, not Fiendish enough for the Phantoms. <laughs> no, but when, <laughs> when we first made that, we 
signed up for Battle of the Bands online with Warp Tour and stuff, and so uh, one of the guys liked it so much that um, this online music magazine wanted to put that song on a downloadable card to hand out to people at the at the um, Warp Tour in uh, California. So, figured, yeah. hey, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, very cool. And of course, the uh, the CD cover has a hearse on it and uh, other ghostly imagery. I love uh you gotta love the hearses. You know, I'll probably yeah. I'll probably try to bring mine for the show this Saturday. And the 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 back of it is pretty cool too. Um I should I should have just gave you an album, but it was so busy at uh oh, Pantus, uh, Well yeah, and then you know then people's uh, tires were flat. Tires were flattened, <laughs> uh you know, I mean uh, base cabinets weren't working or base no, I know, you guys not only did they have to lend us a base cabinet which seems that seems to be like a uh, a Roosevelt Dolls tradition. Yeah. It shouldn't be, uh, but we're all getting, you know, we're all kind of getting up there. And I, I hate to admit it, but I'm I'm suffering some some major back issues right now. I don't even know if I'm going to lift anything. I'm going to be like calling up my haunters. Can you help me move us set up this bar? <laughs> I'm going to leave my PA speakers at the bar. I decided I don't like they got these monsters. I don't want to move them ever again. <laughs> It's always something, and then yeah, then then uh, we got noticed that uh, our drummer got a flat tire, so that and then you guys were totally helping him out with his tire. I was like, yeah, and I, I was kind of worried because I was the only one there watching Rat Bat Spider, and I I'm I'm kind of old school where I like to have as many members of the band support the other bands. Oh, so exactly. Like, where, are the, where are these guys? Are they out there just smoking? And then they told me they were helping you with the tire. So. Yeah, yeah. The- <laughs> Right, I think the mad scientist was was being extremely helpful, and that was cool of you guys. It was just it was well, we were already hanging out outside. I was talking to your singer, and I was talking to you guys outside because you know, we were kind of starting to load our stuff in and whatnot. And I was, you know, yeah, yeah, I, I kind of was going back and forth so I could catch the rat bat spider, and uh, you know, because everybody, I mean, <laughs> like six guys working on a spare tire, I think it was it was going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, that's when those things happen. And uh, but the whole night was a good time. I love Kolchanski's. I love the bar. Um, oh the, yeah, yeah. I mean, I really I dig that place. And I uh, want to I want to do. I'm going to set up another one. I'm going to get a hold of them tomorrow. I want to set up another horror show up there. That would be cool. That would be cool. Because I mean, I, you know, I mean, um, now a horror show like like your horror show, not like Clockwork Orange horror show, or a little of both. Uh, well. Bring it on! <laughs> Just you know, I want to start hitting the hitting the Milwaukee. I, Milwaukee's old stomping ground, so I really want to start getting back up there. Frank's Power Plant's another one that seems really interesting to me. There's just a lot of cool old pubs, you know, and then like Kolchanski's was actually a polka bar. They had accordions yeah. everywhere. I mean, it was just it was cool. Um, uh, awesome. I grew uh, up hearing. I grew up hearing polka all the time. My mom on Sundays would play it. Okay, uh, now Polish, we're so. gonna we're gonna get that. We're gonna they're gonna cut in on us now. We got four seconds, and it's gonna cut okay. in. Okay, so yep. give us about five, three. This is a test message from the emergency alert system originating from the state of Wisconsin Emergency Operations Center. If this had been an actual emergency, you would have been given official information, news, or instructions. This test is now concluded. Okay, we're back. Are you still there, Oliver? Oh yeah, that was faster than I thought. Oh yeah, that yeah. was good. Uh, just the, uh, did you hear it? You didn't hear it, did you? Oh, I heard that beautiful noise for a little bit. Yeah. Oh okay. All right. Well, it's just uh, the whole tone of the what, what they say is sounds different than it used to to me. You know, it said that if there had been an emergency, they're going to give you instructions on what to do, and, and it used to seem more weather orientated in the past. I don't know. Uh huh. And now with all the. Doomsday clock and stuff going on. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, this is you know, when I was when I, in the early punk rock days, way back, uh, right up until like 1984 and prior years before that, it was like everyone was like thinking, oh, 84 was going to be it. We were all expecting the bomb to drop like at any minute, and it was really a, it was a darker, you know, it was a dark time. And then, mm-hmm. then of course, uh, the Berlin Wall came down and and all of that, and it kind of seemed like the Cold War. 
cooled off. And uh, in the end of the 80s, we didn't have that feeling at all. It was like it, it totally had changed. But now, and for younger generations, now they're kind of grow, they're growing up with, they're in their 20s. Like Lilith, you know, she's growing up with this. And now we're back to that thread again. Yeah. And at least with at least with Russia, even though there was a Cold War, <laughs> you know, they were a bigger country that you thought had their their uh, you know brain processes in order. This 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 other guy, he's just a is a rogue, you know. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Times are times are horror right now. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just a it's just a matter of you know. Um, uh, it, it's just a matter of it, even if they block the stuff, you know, the missiles mm-hmm. get fired and they block them, they're going to blow up somewhere and there's going to be fallout from that. Yep. Hopefully it never happens. Right. Yeah. Let's make sure. Let's hope it doesn't. And hope if it has to, then I hope they're. I hope we're prepared. I hope the. Uh, the, the politicians just ain't been lying in their pockets all these years with our defense money, and we really don't have this big defense that they say. But, it, you know, it's interesting, though. They're they're talking about a bomb that's, like, about the size of the one we they had at Hiroshima. All right. We've had all the, we've had a long time since 1945, you know, and who knows what we got. They talked about the neutron bomb. Russia, you know, remarked once that they had a bomb that wasn't nuclear that could do all this uh, uh, damage. But I do think... I do think what, in the worst possible scenario, I think we're going to witness something the likes of which we've never seen before. We're going to, we're going to find out. There's going to be like a, it's going to be an awakening of, uh, firepower and war technology that we're kept, we're, we're kept in the dark. We, we have to be. If we're still oh, talking, yeah. if we're still talking nukes, you know, uh, this many years since, you know, World War II. We, you know, there's so much we don't know, and that's maybe we don't need to know. It doesn't need to be all over Facebook so the enemy can know what we're doing. Yeah, that's another thing too. I think sometimes uh, in this um, generation of you know the online and you can get news anywhere, I think sometimes we leak a little too much. I mean, you yeah. know, other countries can see what we're writing, you know. <laughs> and that was a big point that was being brought up uh, a couple months back with the tweets that uh, the president was making is it gives other countries a glimpse into both our country and exactly the way our president thinks. Mm-hmm. And that can be dangerous within itself. Yeah. Well, they could be. that could all be a bluff, too, you know? I mean, Trump is a big distraction in himself. And, you know, so let, let, let's just hope they're on the game with all this. You know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens, but... Uh, uh, you know they're they're advancing, and uh, it's just craziness, is what it is that we're still at that point. Let's just hope it stays like how you know, you know, like the movies. You know, that's you know, just have it be that that stuff happens in movies, not in real life. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Like it, you like, know, uh, last man, last man on earth by Vincent Price, classic. <laughs> yeah, right. We later turned into the Omega Man with uh, Charlton Heston. Yeah, and then even after that, uh, I think uh, I Am Legend, which is what the book was based, called um, with uh, Will Smith. Yes, yeah. But Vincent's my favorite one, so I take that one. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And the price is always right with Vincent Price. He might have been on that show, too. You never know. He was on The Muppets. So oh. He might have been on The Price is Right, too. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. He would do... <laughs> they paid him, he'd be there. That's how that would go with Vincent Price. Uh, he's... He was in everything. He was the egghead on Batman. He did the the famous Hawaii episode of the Brady Bunch. I mean, <laughs> and then where I first heard of him, the uh, the little bit of the rap in uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller. All oh, right, he did that, and he also and was he, he he did a track with Alice Cooper too back in the day. Yep, and yep. I got to meet Alice Cooper actually two years ago at um the Days of the Dead. Uh huh. Mention. Yeah, we were backstage while that was he was last doing his... year, wasn't it? No, that was yeah, that was last. That was last year. Well, not last year because we... last year's would technically be this year. Oh, okay, so, so two years ago, it makes sense. But we were backstage when he was doing his panel, and we got to kind of hang out with him and the Jasons were backstage. Yeah, too. there was three three of the guys that played Jason King Voorhees Potter hanging out. CJ. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and then and we got we got got to get a couple pictures with Alice, and then that was really cool. It was he was so. So intellectual and so well spoken and eloquent. Listening to him talk was an amazing experience. Oh yeah, and you could you could tell that he he enjoys 
interacting with fans. Yes. You know, some of the some of the people I'm not going to mention names, so you can tell they're just there to make their money. Yep, I, I definitely know what you mean there. But it's really cool. But I am kind of jealous. That, I am kind of jealous that uh, you got to meet my favorite wrestler of all time, and unfortunately, I missed it because we went to the wrong place for the convention. And when I got there, he was gone. Ric Flair, you got to meet Ric Flair. I'm just jealous. That was a really cool experience because I didn't even know what was hap. I'm a huge wrestling fan. I didn't know what was happening. I was just kind of getting ready for the convention and throwing all my stuff together at the bar. And um, Ric Flair was sitting behind me and actually offered me some of the pizza he was eating because I looked hungry. <laughs> and he was just the sweetest, coolest guy ever. I totally went into fangirl, almost crying mode of just oh, like, wow. I love you so much. And he's like, that's cool. Would you like some pizza? <laughs> Thank you. He was the he was really cool. Him and uh, I got to meet Sting. Sting was really cool as well. Lita was one of my favorites to actually meet ever. She's one of my biggest heroes. But that's one of the cool things about Days of the Dead is they do bring in some really cool wrestlers as well. Do you remember a wrestler, a uh, female wrestler named Daphne? Yes. A uh, little little story here. When uh, she was in WCW and they used to have a talking radio show. Yeah. I called in to tell her that I had, when there was Yahoo GeoCities, I had a website dedicated to her. I was the first one to make a website for her. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And she like sent me like um, pictures of um, when she got married to, I think it was the guitarist of Stuck Mojo. She sent me like in a private email photos of it so I could put it on the website and stuff. That, this was years ago, but this is pretty cool. That is very cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, well, I tell you, I'm really looking forward to this show on Saturday. Though. I it's am gonna be, too. I want to see you guys live. I really like your sound. I'm very excited to see the whole thing live. Yeah, when uh, when I listen to our CD, I try not to because it's you listen to your own music is kind of a weird thing. I don't know if you can relate to that um, uh, destruction, but it, it's just weird because you feel weird listening to yourself. Uh huh. But oh. The album, and I try to tell the rest of the guys in the band, but they don't believe me. Almost every band, when they play live, they play faster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you want to practice them slower and kind of get used to that because it's, mm -hmm. it's automatic, uh, you know, absolutely automatic that you're going to play faster. Does your drummer sometimes get mad when you play faster? Cause I yeah, was he was doing that the other night. He was playing them a little but I thought, you know, it's a younger crowd, so <laughs> why not? You know, I, I didn't... I, I, to tell you the truth, I just was in the mode. I wasn't really, I was just went going along. I was, it was not even something that was on my mind. I got enough to do with them singing and playing at the same time. So, you know, okay. but you uh, were, your, your band was awesome. I, I still got, I don't know what song it is. I apologize, but I still got this little like ditty in my head. It's like, do, 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 do. Oh, I don't know. yeah, that, that's just an old blues riff you're talking about. I know exactly what you mean. But, like, mixing it with what you play, I, you know, it, see, that's what I kind of like about our our music, too, like your music, is you can't pigeonhole, pigeonhole it into one genre, you know? Right, yeah, I don't want to be a one-trick pony. No, and we never even, we we, we wanted to do something horror or sci-fi-ish. Um, we had all kinds of different names that what our band was going to be called. Uh, some of them were really silly, like Backseat Bingo, but mm -hmm. that's another story. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we wanted to do the horror thing. But as far as like music, we just play whatever in the in the basement, and whatever comes out comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, no, you guys had a lot of versatility. That's what I liked about it. You weren't just, you know, you weren't just doing that, you know, one kind of thing. You were you you guys are all over the place. You you know you you had stuff you did with a lot of distortion on your guitar, and then other stuff was really clean. As a matter of fact, we listen. We listened to that track uh, while we were we were getting ready here. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I, I'm a little partial to the distortion, but I I like the the clean with the the heavy reverb. So mm -hmm. uh, got to have reverb, right? Oh gosh. <laughs> I mean, so many bands don't play with that, and they well that they maybe they don't need to, but you know, there's there's so many bands out there. There's there's really the there's 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 two different kinds. There's there's like bands that are just real rock and roll and sort of two dimensional, okay. But then there's mm -hmm. other bands that use effects and play melodically, 
and those bands have more of a three-dimensional they have imagery okay they're creating mm-hmm. imagery and the other bands if they're not really doing that then they really don't even care if there's reverb on vocals or guitars and i mean i'll go to a clubs they don't even have reverb or digital for the vocals i'm like are you oh, kidding geez, me nice talk here with die. <laughs> right <laughs> Don't worry, we'll have it for the port. <laughs> Obviously. But he does have he does have his own his own pedal. Okay. That's all he has to carry. I'm always jealous of him that he doesn't have to carry as much. Well, you know, bring whatever you can. If you got a couple extra PA monitors that might help. It's just a little place. Well, I, I saw some pictures. It looks pretty cool. I like how like that big door like swings open, it looks like mm-hmm. on the stage it looks like there's a big door. Yeah. Uh, on, oh, you know, it's a <laughs> it's a it's a room, it's a room, and then there's oh, okay. a, it's a room, and then there's like another room that would have been, uh, that has a fireplace, and it, it's a you'll really dig it. It's a it's a good crowd too. People, uh, they they come through, they're in and out of there. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, I will play some of. Uh, of your tunes between the three and four hour. I think we'll play several of them, actually. Feel, feel free. Yeah. Um, there is one song that we didn't... Well, there was a few songs we didn't play at our show because I didn't feel like bringing my other guitar because I'm having trouble with it, but it's in drop D. And one of the songs that's on there is about... Um, well, other people say Elizabeth, some say Elizabeth, but Elizabeth Bathory, one of the uh, blood countess is about oh, her. Oh, yes. That's so that cool. one's a little heavy, though. That one's a little heavy. <laughs> so. Wait, I like that, though. You guys have a very theatrical quality that I really enjoy. Oh, yeah. We'd like to do even more. Like, one of our things that we would love to do is that when we're playing Blood Countess, it used to be our closer, but uh, Phantom Machine is now our closer. But we'd, we'd actually like, like, not every song, but a couple songs actually have, like, that person, like a person dress up as that person, like, you know, somebody dress up in a flannel and that, that deer hunting hat, like Ed mm-hmm. Gein, you know, and like throw them around the crowd, stuff like that would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Definitely sounds like you guys have a really cool vision for what you're doing. I appreciate that you guys like it. It means a lot. Like, Yeah, yeah, though, it's know. awesome stuff. Absolutely. I was like, I wanted, to play. I asked you right away that night to come down and do the show with us. I know, and I was like, I was like telling the rest of the band, I'm like, we got to do that show, man. We got to do it. I mean, I don't. If we don't do this show, it's going to be something I am going to regret the rest of my life that I didn't do it. You know, I, I, <laughs> well, I, I hate you. living with I hate living with regret. You know. Oh, now we'll have many more. We'll have many more, I'm sure, and it's going to be it's going to be absolutely fantastic. We're talking to Oliver, the caretaker Collins. From the Fiendish Phantoms, which will be playing with my band, the Roosevelt Dolls, for the 16th anniversary of Crimson Theater at the Port of Kenosha Beverage House, 714 50th Street. And uh, it's going to be a great time. You want to come and check these guys out. They're awesome. If you love the genre and you love it and you love rock and roll, you'll love these guys. It's going to be great. And, uh, well, thanks a lot for being on the show, and we'll, uh, we'll see you Saturday. Thank you, and stay fiendish. Okay, Thank I will you. do. Take I will. Care. Can't wait till Saturday. All right. Live and local. This is AM 1050 WLIP. Dr. Destruction's Big Top Radio Broadcast. After midnight, WLIP. It's late at night The doctors on the TV do give them a fright The movies are cheesy and so is the host Look out, honey, here's 13 ghosts And Dr. Destruction screams in the air Bill's the monster, he eat her And Dr. Destruction screams in the air Dr. Destruction screams in the air Please, come out Showtime, ghoulies. It is indeed showtime, ghoulies, as we now enter 
morning musical mayhem. Or is it musical morning mayhem? Other one. <laughs> All right. It's been a great night for music here on the Big Top Radio Broadcast. And, it has. Uh, yeah, we want to thank uh, uh, everyone that came on. It was oh, great. Yeah. And uh, we promised to pay some music. So uh, let's uh, let this one roll out. It's called uh, Ed. I wonder who they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Could he be from Wisconsin? Hmm. We'll just have to listen.
right, a little sample of the fiendish phantoms. They'll be playing with us, the Roosevelt Dolls, at the Port of Kenosha Beverage House, 714 50th Street. That's Saturday. Uh, we got to get all our listeners out there. Yes, yes. You guys got to come out for that one. Yeah, we got to get uh, got to get Shirley out there in the mosh pit. <laughs> get Lenny Palmer to come out. Oh, yeah. I think we have another lighting up somewhere this week. We never got around to that. No. I'm sure something's going on. I'm sure. He's a busy man. He's a busy man. He's an artist. He's an author. He's a talk show host. It's Lenny Palmer. 8 to noon here on AM 1050 WLIP. So I'm going to roll another one from the Fiendish Phantoms. Uh, this one's called Blood Countess. That's a festive little name. <laughs>
Yeah, it's a lot heavier than their other tune, isn't it? Yeah, that was. I dig it, though. I uh, know. It's going to be a great show at the port Saturday, so hands down on that one. And, of course, uh, well, there's going to be a show for benefit show for Dave Dredd at uh, Hattrick's Friday night. I hope everybody gets out and supports that. And, uh, well, let's roll this other one by the fiendish phantoms called Old Man. You found 